Denny Warwick writes, Matt and Craig, I should like you to each compile a list of what you think the top 10 box office winners will be for the summer. You could show us the list in the next video. Please, it could be fun. Jenny, that is a very good idea, uh, but it probably would take about an hour. Yeah, and we're not accountants. Instead, Craig, why don't you pick one movie that you're looking forward to seeing this summer? I'm looking forward to Man of Steel, which I didn't think I was going to be looking forward to because Superman, I can take him or leave him. And of course, it brings in... Michael, Michael Shannon. Shannon. Exactly. I really hope he says Neil before Zod. And I... if he doesn't, I'm going to be really disappointed. The movie I'm probably looking most forward to is uh, Joss Whedon's uh, Much Ado About Nothing. Because it's obviously a labor of love for him. I know he gets together with friends in his backyard and acts out little Shakespeare scenes. And it's great to see someone taking that, that love of something they're not normally known for and actually bringing it to the big screen. And I'm also kind of looking forward to uh, Francis Ha, the new Greta Gerwig movie. Uh, Noam, Noam uh, Baumbach did that. Bambak. Bambak. So. No, 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 a Bambak. <laughs> no, 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 a Bambak. He makes depressing movies. They may make you sad. <laughs> oh, they make you sad when you watch the movie. The movie, the movie. Weird Al, call me. <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. Well, Craig, first of all, this movie is not the movie we're watching tonight, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of wish fulfillment and pull out Top Secret from the Top <laughs> Secret thing. Thank you! There you go. And the second thing I want to say to you is, HELP! Oh my god! <laughs> the Beatles! I've also never seen this movie. What? I've only seen a Hard Day's Night. I saw A Hard Day's Night about 15 years ago, and I loved it, and I was like, I can't wait to watch Help! That's exactly how it was with me. <laughs> All right, well, we're kindred wanderers in this world of ours. Released in 1965, directed by Richard Lester, and starring The Beatles. The Beatles? They were known as the Fabulous Foursome, I believe. I, I do think so. The film's original title was Eight Arms to Hold You. I love that title. Paul McCartney has said that he got the idea for the name Eleanor Rigby from his Help co-star, Eleanor Braun, who we saw in Bedazzled. Oh! This was her big screen debut. This movie is another benched movie. Is it? We were originally going to watch this in our run of auteurs from season one, and I decided I needed a black and white movie, so I swapped in Unfaithfully Yours. Ah. Oh. And Help got the boot. Well, Craig, here is your gift. I won't say what it is, but I will say it is worth several million dollars. <laughs> Finally, the show pays off. <laughs> it is several million dollars. Authentic U.S. cash with uh, the Beatles on it. Baby, I'm a rich man. Baby, I'm a rich man. Baby, I'm a rich man, too. Well, folks, why don't you scream like a, a girl from the 60s and run with us over to the old leather couch for a little bit of Beatlemania and help. Help begins in a Hindu-esque temple, where a human sacrifice is about to be made to the god Kaili. An appropriate beginning for this light-hearted romp. She's not wearing the sacrificial ring! They need the ring for the sacrifice. The ring is on the finger of Ringo, drummer for worldwide rock and roll sensations, The Beatles. When I was young, so much younger than today. I am excited by this. Yes. <laughs> The leader of the cult, Evil Swami Klang, is furious, and they travel to England to try and get the ring back. Meanwhile, the Beatles are hanging out in their thoroughly modern bachelor pad. The sandwich machine attacks Ringo. It's Ame. She's trying to pull the ring off of it through the sandwich hole. You know, I thought she was a sandwich. Until she went spare on me hand. <laughs> <laughs> that week, there are five more attempts to steal the ring. They grab him through a mailbox slot. They magnetize an elevator. Hey, just like in Breaking Bad. They make a bathroom go crazy. And two other attempts. Why don't they just murder Ringo? <laughs> One, two, three. You're gonna lose that girl. Yes, yes, you're gonna lose that girl. You're gonna lose, yes, yes, you're gonna that, girl. lose that girl. Ringo's gonna lose that ring. Gonna lose that ring. He's gonna, gonna lose. Ring. A mailbox is gonna grab him by the hand. Gonna get his hand. 
And then a bathroom is gonna tear off all his sleeves. Gonna tear his sleeves. Gonna lose that yes, ring. Yes, yes, he's gonna lose that ring. He's gonna lose, lose that, that ring. ring. <laughs> 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 there, we there we go. Help meet Scarface. <laughs> that person is dead. <laughs> the Beatles investigate what's going on by visiting an Oriental. Their words. There was so much more murder in this one than in Hard Day's Night too. Yep, Hard Day's Night had no chainsaw mishaps. <laughs> they go to an Indian restaurant, they eat some soup. And mayhem erupts. Ringo is sick of these attempts on his life. He wants nothing more to do with this ring, but he can't get it off of his finger. They go to a jeweler. Jeweler, you're not getting anywhere, are you, jeweler? Any days yet, sir. Who tries to saw it off in the most unsafe way possible. They visit some mad scientist, Dr. Foote, and his little buddy, who use science to try and get the ring off. The mad scientists realize, With a ring like that, I could, dare I say it, Rule the world. Somehow. So now they're after the ring, too. They're in, a, they're in trouble, man. I am not what I seem. Ame is not what she seems. Turns out she's a double agent. She doesn't want the ring to go to anyone. Here I stand. Head in sewer. <laughs> she's actually on their side. And after serenading her with a beautiful song. And I hear them say. <laughs> End of part one. Intermission. <laughs> she plans to inject some finger shrinking serum into Ringo, but she accidentally injects it into Paul, and he shrinks down to the tiny size and runs around on the floor. During all this, there's a scuffle. The Beatles are just punching everyone they see. Prepare to meet Kaili in hell. The two great rock and roll representatives of peace beating up a bunch of Arabs. The mad scientists show up at the end so they can escape and they go skiing. She's got a ticket to ride. This piano belongs to a bear. <laughs> After more attempts on their lives on the slopes, they go to Scotland Yard to try and get some protection. I'm a bit of a famous mimic in my own small way, you know, James Cagney. Hello there, this is the famous Ringo here, Gear Fab. What is it that I can do for you, as it were, Gear Fab? Not a bit like Cagney. He puts him up in the most heavily guarded palace in the world. This disguise, courtesy of Banksy. Uh, the, even Buckingham Palace isn't safe for the Fab Four. So they go to the Bahamas. And they're all still trying to get the ring because that's all that happens in the movie. Oh, he's doing a T.J. Hooker in reverse. <laughs> Richard Lester's Death Proof. I don't remember the rest of the movie. <sighs> a guy hangs out of a blimp and makes footprints. It all kind of runs together. They're just gonna do it up right there on the beach. They're gonna kill Ringo Starr. And next year, it will be you! <laughs> they put in the Wicker Man. Finally, the ring comes off of Ringo's finger. There's a big dust up on the beach. People are rolling around and yelling. There's falling down. Come on, fellas. I'm sure there's some pies around here somewhere. <laughs> and the Beatles are there too. They don't just leave. They stick around. Machetes swinging everywhere. They could they could die at any second. Because they are addicted to antics. <laughs> Finally, the movie ends. Help! I need a story! Help! I need some structure! Help! I need a satisfying denouement! Help! Well, he uh, didn't get any of that stuff this time. No, no, certainly not. I am really sad right now. I don't like the Beatles to make me sad, but I was expecting... more? It lacks charm. Yeah. Hard Day's Night is all charm. Mm -hmm. It succeeds because it just shows the Beatles being the Beatles. Confronting the absurd nature of their own celebrity, you sort of see through their point of view. Yeah. This is just kind of a dumb James Bond type plot. And it's floating on charm. 
They're just floating on their own charm throughout the entire yeah. movie. So it's not charming, it's it's smug. It's smug. You've yeah. got John Lennon kissing his own book, mm -hmm. you know, and, and stuff like that. It certainly was overcomplicated. Mm -hmm. It was overcomplicated and too simple at the same time. They try to get the ring, they don't get the ring. They try to get the ring, they don't get the ring. They try to get the ring, they don't get the ring. But this plot is labyrinthine. I couldn't <laughs> summarize this plot to save my soul. It's so vibrant, and yet it's so boring. How can that happen? I don't... I. We've seen the movie Head together, and that movie is a mind trip, and it makes no sense at all. And I was wishing I was watching Head. Head is a series of sketches. Yeah. And all the sketches are modular, and they have a beginning, a middle, and end. And some of them flow into each other. It's so episodic that you can sort of reset when you get mm -hmm. to a new point. You know, oh, now Davy Jones is singing a uh, daddy's song. Yeah. Okay, now we're in the cafeteria, and Mickey Dolenz is punching a woman. And, yeah. You know, uh, and it goes from da 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 And this is just, it's just a mire of, of wackadoodles and capers. The thing about A Hard Day's Night is it did give you a glimpse at sort of a heightened reality mm -hmm. of what their reality was. And this isn't any sort of reality. This is just a silly espionage plot. Yeah. I really wish that there was some sort of halt put on direct Bond spoofs back in the 60s. Did they ever work? And like Flint didn't work. First Casino Royale First, cer certainly didn't work. All the way up to Austin Powers, which finally kind of got it right. And, you know, it's yeah. like, we, we get the point. James Bond is absurd. What did you think of the violence in this? It's George Harrison and John Lennon beating up people. I know that John <laughs> Lennon started out as a street punk. Imagine it, yeah. there's no fist in your face. <laughs> What was your favorite scene? You know, the, the best scenes are always when they're just performing. I don't know what it is, and it's been studied for the last 50 years, what it is about those four guys singing and smiling that is more exciting than seeing the Zombies or, you know, some other band sure. doing the same thing. Their first appearance in the opening credits is so joyful. Yeah, they're delightful. If you haven't heard, folks, the Beatles, check them out. It just raises everything up and then everyone starts talking and it drops down into the pit again. The pit. The pit of Kaili. Well folks, we hope you're recovering from your Beatlemania. And if you haven't seen Help, check it out. You watch it. God damn it. We did. John McCarthy writes, If I was a millionaire, I would give it all to this show. Thanks and keep up the good work. Is, is that where you got this from? John McCarthy. Thanks, John. But seriously, folks, we don't want your million dollars. We only want a dollar or two here and there. And you can do that by visiting welcometothebasementshow.com. There is a PayPal donation fund uh, to support the show. Your donations help with production costs and with website maintenance, and it is much appreciated. Our recent donors, we got a lot of them, are Patricia, Robert, Busy Hands, Carl, Michael, Daniel, Pierre, Ashley, and Stephen. Uh, a lot of these are international donors and a lot of repeat donors. So thank you all sincerely. Thank you. And Irvin Blystone writes, Wow, thank you guys. I have been trying to figure out what the name of the rabbit movie was that has haunted my nightmares since I was five years old. I think I'm going to try and watch Watership Down again. Maybe it will put my oldest nightmare to rest. Or maybe it'll just really cement it deeper in your subconscious. Well, Irvin, you know, I share your experience. I watched Watership Down when I was a young child and it, it, it made me sad. But, you know, I think it's good for kids to get freaked out by movies. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, you know, you don't need to traumatize them. Don't show them Saw. But they should, uh, they should have their minds blown a little bit. Things like uh, the riverboat sequence from Willy Wonka. That's the scariest thing I ever saw in my life when I was a kid, and oh. I watch it every single time. I don't think kids get enough of that today. They just watch the Dora, the Explorer, and... And then they jump straight to Saw. I say freak them out. Yeah, terrorize your children. Not, and not, no, not no. terrorize them. No. Expand the mind. Expand the mind. And now it's time for seeing it. Say that. Viewer <clears throat> Nicholas Cage writes, I wish it was the real one, <laughs> yes. but I suspect it's not. Please do a tour of the basement. I want to see which vinyls you have back there. Uh-oh. Tonight, Nicholas, you're getting your wish because we are doing Seen It Vinyl Edition. Ooh. These are movies that not only have I seen, but I own the soundtrack on a uh, vinyl record. First one we've got is uh, an older movie that I uh, just recently saw for the very first time. It is Stagecoach. Ah, I, I just recently saw that too, separate from you. But it seems as though you have the 1960s soundtrack in your hand, not the 1930s soundtrack. 
Oh, Anne Margaret. What the, the hell is this? The original Stagecoach, though, was directed by John Ford. I thought that this was far too colorful to <laughs> yes. be the soundtrack to the original Stagecoach. Yes, check out Stagecoach. Orson Welles said he watched it around 40 times in preparation of doing Citizen Kane. You understand why your dad loves John Wayne so much because he is so cool looking in this movie. And it's just great characters, great storytelling all the way through. I love that movie. Have you seen the 60s version, though? No. With Bing Crosby? (laughs) How unobservant am I that I didn't notice all these... Slim Pickens. I didn't notice all these people who aren't in the damn movie. Period 8 Productions says, The Beatles, A Hard Day's Night. Oh. Well, what do you know? Seen it. (laughs) Yes, we have seen it. This is not the album, A Hard Day's Night. This is the soundtrack to the film. So it has all of, like, the interstitial score that I believe George Martin composed. Oh, really? Hard Day's Night in mono. Mono. The kissing audio system. E-Cat Blacks. 2001, A Space Odyssey. My God, it's full of grooves. (laughs) Got a little gatefold action going there. Some say Kubrick's masterpiece. What say you, Mr. Johnson? I haven't seen it since I was in college. uh, I'd have to see it again now that I'm older. I saw it a lot when I was in high school. I sort of uh, would rent movies, and then we had we had a double VCR situation, so I'd dub them. No, oh. and I just watch them over and over again. I see, because you know, no dates. Uh, I didn't like to go outside, and now I do this show. <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> Zips writes Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Watch that movie to death in high school. Now every time I think of watching it, I cringe. Well, have you listened to it? Never to listen to it, not unless you leave the room. <laughs> And this is not just scenes from the movie. This is a comedy album. Oh. There are comedy sketches on here that have nothing to do with the movie. Oh, nice. Also, Zips, I felt a little bit the same way that you do about the movie. I watched it to death in high school as well, and I didn't want to see it again. But give it about ten years and go back to it, and you'll be laughing just as much as when you saw it the first time. The Diabetic. Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Seen it closer to a thousand times, and I am beginning to hate it. Oh, how could you hate Star Wars? Doesn't everyone love it? It was the first movie I ever saw in the theater. Look at all these scenes. <sighs> all of that looks so magical to me after all these years. It's like your favorite candy from when you were a kid, and it still tastes good. And Sir Garforth says, movie you should watch, Heavy Metal. I've seen it. I have not seen it. Is this Ralph Bakshi? I don't think so. It's like a sci-fi animated creep show. Oh, okay. Nice gatefold here. A lot of scenes from the movie. Maybe it was Bakshi. I'm not sure. Some of it looks like Bakshi. I'm sure some of our viewers will correct us if we're wrong. John Candy is in this. Really? Yep. He plays a nerd who is sucked into a a time vortex, and he comes out like this big muscled warrior. There's still hope for us that we could become (laughs) muscled warriors. That's seen it, and that's our show. Thanks for joining us for the uh, comic hijinks of help. Please check out WelcomeToTheBasementShow.com if you haven't already. Kick a few dollars into the PayPal donation fund. Support the show. Yes, help. Nice, I see. Thanks. I I tied it all around. Okay, work that in there. Good night. See you next time. Kids don't do drugs. You may think that your cool friends the Beatles do it, and it makes them brilliant, but it also makes them take any story ideas that come their way. The use of drugs only leads to the nightmare of making Beatles movies. Good day. I am not what I seem.